This week's video is the pinhole cast on used for starting a circular project worked in the round from the center out. I'll be using the crochet cast on to form the pinhole. As always, if you would like to jump directly to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. This is the second video of this month illustrating how the crochet cast on is the Swiss Army knife of cast on methods. A pinhole cast on is done by creating live stitches around the starting yarn tail. The yarn tail is then later used as a drawstring to pull those initial stitches tightly. This is the same concept as using the ending yarn tail to fasten off live stitches when you are working a project in the round toward the center. Now there are a lot of different techniques that can be used to create a pinhole start to a project, but in most cases those techniques can only be used in this specific situation. The reason that I like to use the crochet cast on to create my pinhole is that it's a familiar technique that can be used in a variety of cast on situations. So projects that might use the pinhole cast on are hats that are started at the crown and worked down. Um, they might be flat circular items like blankets that start at the center and work out. Or they could be small items like toy, like stuffed toys where an animal head or body or limb need a pinhole start in order to get going. Regardless of the type or size of the project, they all start with just a very few stitches, maybe four to ten stitches at the most, and you will need to use a technique for working small circumferences in the round. The traditional technique would be double pointed needles, but you could use the two circular needle method, or my preference is the magic loop method, which uses one long circular needle. It really doesn't matter. But as the project gets larger, you may need to switch to a different circular technique, just depending on what it is that you're knitting. To get started, you're going to need the needles you're going to be using to knit in a small circumference. That might be double pointed needles, it might be one circular needle, or it might be two circular needles, whatever your preference is. You, next, you're going to need a crochet hook and a locking stitch marker. You start with a slip knot and you need a good tail about 12 inches or 30 centimeters. Now you are going to cast on half of the number of stitches you need using the crochet cast on and the yarn tail. I need eight cast on stitches so I'm going to crochet four stitches. If you need an odd number, then round up. So if you need seven, half of that's three and a half, so round up to four. So whether I need seven or eight, I'm going to cast on four stitches using the crochet cast on. Then I'm going to chain a few stitches using some more of the tail. That's just to kind of hold that in place. I enlarge that last loop and I let this hang. Now I'm going to slide my stitches to the other end of the needle. So if you're using a double point, that's not going to be far, but I have a circular needle, so I'm slipping all the way to this end. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my locking stitch marker and I'm going to hang it on, this, on the working yarn here. This serves two purposes, which we will see in a few minutes. You are now going to double the number of stitches on your needle by working a yarn over and then a knit one and alternating back and forth between yarn over and knit one all the way across. So for an even number of stitches, you will start with a yarn over. If you needed an odd number, you will start with a knit one and you will always end with a knit one regardless. So if I need eight stitches, I need to start with a yarn over. To start with a yarn over with the yarn held in your right hand, tension the yarn however you need to do it and pick up your needle. You're going to hold the needle in front of the yarn so that the yarn is tensioned behind it. You're going to bring the needle under and now the yarn is laying across the top of the needle and you can begin uh, working. So you've got your yarn over and now you can do your knit one. If you hold the yarn in your left hand, 
bring your needle under the yarn that creates the yarn over and now you need to knit one so anchor the yarn against the the needle for right now so that you can swing your needle around and work the first stitch continue alternating yarn over knit one all the way across and again if you needed an odd number you should have started with a knit one before you doing any of your yarn overs and you always end with a knit one so now we count our stitches two four six eight I have the eight stitches I need I'm ready to start working in the round the working yarn is attached to the last stitch that was cast on so the first stitch that I will be knitting is the one that's connected to this locking stitch marker if I have an even number of stitches I'm going to be knitting into a yarn over if I have an odd number of stitches I'm going to be knitting into a regular knit stitch so if this is a yarn over right here uh, follow your instructions for your the first round of your pattern but knit the stitch through the back if your instructions tell you to knit the stitch then knit it through the back if your instructions tell you to increase in the stitch using a knit front back for this stitch only you will do a knit back front instead so whatever your instructions tell you to do do that with the exception of this first stitch if this is a yarn over At this point I've worked two rounds and I've doubled the, the number of stitches as the work gets bigger and bitter, bigger it can be difficult to tell where the beginning of the round is so I find it um, to be good to use this uh, locking stitch marker to mark the first stitch of the round but before I do that I can release um, the crochet cast on to create the drawstring so I just pull on this chain and it's going to undo that initial round but because it's got to come around this corner it can sometimes be difficult to pull out those final stitches which is the first reason this locking stitch marker is here you can pull on it and it will release the rest of that chain so at this point you can pull on on this to tighten everything so now you can remove this locking stitch marker and then reposition it on the stitch under the needle just to mark the first stitch of the round this will really help you as the circle of fabric gets bigger and bigger at the end of your project uh, it, when you pull the drawstring closed it might want to relax and open up so what you do is thread the yarn tail onto a tapestry needle and run it through the path of the stitches one more time what through the path of the base of the stitches one more time this is the same thing that you would do if you were fastening off live stitches um, at the end of a project like if you're working toward the center you would do it a second time so once you do that and then you pull it it will stay closed well, if you have any questions or comments about this video or suggestions for a video that you would like to see in the future you can leave uh, those down in the comments below or you can join the discussion in my Ravelry group rocks rocks in the next two weeks I'll be rounding out this series by showing how to use the crochet cast on for a tubular cast on as well as a provisional cast on with built-in lifeline once all of the videos are complete you'll be able to see them all in the playlist above my left shoulder if you'd like to see all of my cast on videos those are in a playlist below and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel please click on my face not this one that one thanks for watching please subscribe